Okay guys, JP here, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're gonna go ahead and install VMware on our brand new Cisco UCS server, and we're at the point where we wanna go ahead and hit enter to load the installer. Now, it doesn't really matter in your case, in your data center, in your lab, how you get to this point. So, th the idea is that you have to get here, right? It doesn't really matter whether you boot off the CD, whether you do the virtual media like we did, and then just in case you're curious, in the, um, in the KVM console, uh, we click virtual media we activated the virtual devices and then we went ahead and we mapped um, we mapped the CD DVD to the ISO image that's actually sitting on my desktop this server is actually in a remote data center uh, well, data center it's really in another room um, and I'm sitting here in my office loading VMware onto this box so you know again it doesn't matter how you get here the point is that you have to get here in order for you to do this just hit enter and wait for it to actually load the installer now at this point I'm gonna actually pause the video and come back because it's gonna take some time for it to load all the files from the installer so you can see it starts loading uh, these various different um, various different files after this it's going to go to a splash screen where it's going to continue loading and then it's going to get to a point where it's going to ask us some questions for the install at that point I'll go ahead and kick off the recording again and I'll come right back and we can actually go through the prompts together to get VMware installed okay guys so after the uh, after the loading, after the installer finishes loading, this is the screen you're going to get to. And this is where you're going to start actually going through some of the prompts to install VMware. So we're going to go ahead here, we're going to hit enter to, to continue. But before you install VMware, and, and actually I probably should have mentioned this before you even download the, the ISO image, you want to go ahead and you want to go to this website here, uh, www.vmware.com forward slash resources forward slash compatibility. If you buy a server, you go out, you buy a server off of eBay or something like that, uh, especially if it's an older box, you want to make sure that your server is on the compatibility list for that version of VMware. There's plenty of servers out there floating around on eBay and Craigslist and whatnot being given away by companies that will only support you know VMware 5.5 or 6.0 or something like that you want to make sure that your server is is compatible with the actual operating system okay same thing if you're going to install Windows right so we're going to go ahead and hit enter here for continue Oh, got to click in the KVM here. All right, we'll say F11 here to accept and continue. I mean, you can read the license agreement if you really want to, but I don't know a single human that does. So this is going to go ahead and scan for available devices. This takes a couple of seconds. It even tells you right here, this may take a few seconds. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video and I'll come back in the next screen. So once it scans for the available devices, this will be the next screen. You're going to want to choose the the hard disk that's going to win that, that where you're going to install the the operating system. So you know if you remember, if you watched the previous video uh, where we actually provisioned our UCS server, we created two different virtual disk groups. We created uh, two RAID one groups. One was going to be our boot disk, that was the 135. The other one was going to be for our storage, and that was the the 400 uh, plus gig. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to highlight the 135 we'll go ahead and hit enter and you can move back and forth with just the arrow keys on your keyboard uh, there's no point click so in other words you can move the mouse all day long it's all going to be based on up down arrows and then your um, your keyboard commands down here so it'll tell you exactly what you want to do escape for cancel f1 for details f5 for refresh etc now in this next screen I already have or I've already had a version of VMware previously installed on these disks so this is where VMware if you're trying to overwrite your system or upgrade it this is where you would want to select either upgrade or you would want to maybe reinstall your operating system here what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to check overwrite and you can just arrow down hit the space key to actually put an X in that box and then you can go ahead and hit enter what I want to do is I want to completely erase everything that's on the on the the disks at the moment and I want to install a fresh copy of VMware so I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter here and then I'm gonna choose what my keyboard layout is gonna be now for me obviously US default but you can choose you know obviously whichever one you want now here we need to give this guy a root password it doesn't need to be complex we don't need some funky characters we just need something simple Cisco 123 I like VMware whatever makes you happy so I'm gonna create a simple password here and yes they don't match because I didn't do the other one yet alright so we'll, we'll make two matching passwords we'll go ahead and hit enter and now what it's gonna do is it's gonna just scan for um, scan for additional information and I think there's gonna be one or two more prompts that we're gonna have to answer It might be just a confirmation 
So yeah, so this is just basically going to say, hey, listen, you know, just a warning. We're going to erase everything on the disk. This disk will be repartitioned. This installer is configured to install this version on, on this storage array. So we're just going to go ahead and hit F11, and that's going to go ahead and kick off the install. Now this is going to go to 100%, and then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and come back. I'm going to pause the video. I don't want to have you guys sit here watching the, uh, the percent just, just grow. So I'll be back in a couple minutes. So once we're done actually copying over the files, what we want to do is we want to remove the virtual media. And so we'll come up here to where we have virtual media. And all we have to do on this particular UCS server is we're going to go ahead and just select activate virtual devices. What this will do is this will actually remove any of the devices that we have uh, that we've mapped already. So we'll click that. This will say, hey, there is one device mapped. Closing this virtual media will unmap those. Yes, we don't care. So now we come back here and we see that there, uh, there are no devices mapped. Now, one quick thing that you have to remember to do. Uh, in the last video where I was going through the SimC, you know, I was showing you some of the different boot options where you can go in and you can modify you know how you want to boot the device you want to make sure that you create a local disk or you want to make sure that at some point in the boot process you're going to hit the local disk it's not always going to be set up for you so just go in and make sure that that's going to happen for you okay I won't show you how to do that in this video you can go onto your own uh, onto your own server and make sure that you're going to boot off of the local disk once this install is finished so I'll go ahead and I'll hit enter here and this is going to shut down VMware this is going to reboot the server and in theory what should happen is once we go through post once we actually go through the reboot process this UCS server is going to boot from the local disk that we just set up so here we're shutting down VMware and we should come back up in a very very similar screen if you guys haven't seen VMware before we'll come up in a very similar screen and we will be able to start configuring VMware configure the IP addresses and all that kind of fun stuff so I'll see you guys there in a couple seconds okay guys so the box rebooted and it came up to the VMware splash screen so everything looks like it's fine now I did go in and make some customizations you'll notice here that I've changed the host name to be XIE lab one I've gone ahead and given this a static address because uh, most of the time in my lab in my production lab I really only have one really beefy server that runs VMware and then I have everything else you know obviously the virtualized guest operating systems inside so let me show you how I did that so let me scroll down here down at the bottom of your splash screen you're going to notice that you can press F2 to customize the system so we'll go ahead and do that and it's going to ask us for that ID and password that we set up when we were installing VMware so we'll type that in we'll hit OK or hit enter We'll scroll up and then we'll have a couple of different options we can configure the password if we want to what we really want here or what I'm really after is configuring the management network now a lot of people go in here and they'll go into network adapters and they'll start looking around at what particular network adapters they want to select I generally will leave it alone um, because I like to make most of my changes inside of VMware itself so I'll go into the vSphere client and make most of those changes so I'm gonna hit escape here what I did do though is I went down here just using the up and down arrow keys on my keyboard I went into the IPv4 configuration and you can just arrow down here to the static option you can put a space uh, just hit the space key and it will go ahead and select this radial here and then all you'll have to do is arrow down here you can backspace out that particular IP address and then you can put in uh, the IP address that essentially you're looking for okay and your gateway etc now once you hit enter here you can go down and you can either do the IPv6 configuration which right now I don't really care about so I just have my link local address here FE80 etc and then I did modify the DNS configuration so I gave myself a primary DNS server of 8.8.8 .8 and again I changed the host name to XIE lab 1 now once you're done if you scroll down to the bottom here you'll notice that enter is what actually selects that option escape is what's actually going to get me out of this screen so once I hit escape this is going to give me it may not because I didn't really change the IP address we'll see what happens we'll hit escape one more time and yeah so I didn't really change anything when you do actually change something though what's going to happen is it's going to bark at you it's going to say hey you know you've changed the IP address to this box we're going to restart the the management network is that okay obviously you'll lose connections when that happens so you want to make sure nobody's connected to it now I have my vSphere client loaded here this guy it looks like it might be for a much older version so we may have to do an upgrade here if we do I'll pause the video 
So let's go ahead and say root. We're going to enter in our password here, uh, 172.16.100.10. That's our IP. We'll say log in, and this is probably going to bark at us to um, install. So a certificate is already trusted. Yes, that's fine. My old VMware box was the same IP address. That's why I'm trying to keep things consistent here. Uh, so we'll see what happens. This may be a little bit too big. Yep, so let's shrink this guy down. Give me one second here. We'll bring this guy into the right screen. There we go. Okay, so at this point, we have VMware installed. This guy is, uh, you can see it's running one, uh, 196 gig of RAM. We have plenty of processors here. Uh, we don't really have anything yet installed. We don't have any guest operating systems. We don't have anything like that. The one thing I am going to do, though, is I'm going to go in and I'm going to make some changes to the configuration. And mainly what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to do some networking changes. So you can see here that I have a management network, and right now I have one VNIC. So I'm going to click on Properties here. And I'm going to go ahead to Network Adapters, and I'm going to click on Add. The reason why I want to do this is because right now I have another NIC that's plugged in, and I want to be able to use that. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make it a standby NIC. So essentially, if for whatever reason this NIC becomes unplugged, I want VM NIC 1 to kick in. A lot of folks, you know, they, they want to NIC team these, and that's okay. Um, but me personally in my lab environment, I really don't gain anything by having a NIC team between these guys or having two active adapters and having a port channel between them, although you could absolutely do that. So I'm going to say next, finish. We'll go ahead and say close, and now I've got an active standby NIC within VMware. Okay. Now, one last thing that I like to do once I have VMware installed is my actual guest network. So in other words, when I install an operating system, um, when I install, let's say, GNS3, for example, and I, I install the VM, I want that on its own network, uh, its own set of network adapters. So I'm going to click on Add Networking, and I'm going to click Virtual Machine. We'll say Next, and it's going to ask me for a set of adapters. Now, right now, these guys are not plugged in, and that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to say I want these guys to be my um, my network adapters. We'll say Next. It's going to ask me for what network do I want. So what we'll do is we'll say Guest underscore Network. We don't really care about the VLAN ID right now. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, everything that I have right now is is a uh, one flat network and one VLAN. But we'll just say all anyway, or you could say none. It doesn't really matter at this point. We'll say next and then finish. And what we'll see here is that now we have a guest network that's going to give us four network adapters. Now these guys, what I will do is I will go and plug these guys in and create an Ether channel that puts these guys into one Ether channel. This way, this server can use these four ports uh, when when dealing with regular network connectivity to GNS3. So this is how we get uh, VMware installed on our server. And uh, in the next video, we'll go ahead and work on getting GNS3 actually installed and up and running. See you guys there. Bye-bye.